So in Spanish, we have a lot of letters of the alphabet. In some cases, they removed our double R and our double L and the CH. Um, in other cases, they have it. But even if we say Spanish is very, very easy, and we say that it's, here's your letter and here's the sound, we have five letters that represent more than one sound. So that letter C represents, just like in English, hard C and soft C. We so have hard and soft in English and Spanish. The hard G is good, just like in English, but the soft G in Spanish is we have a hard R that we trill, and then we have the soft that we don't trill. It's just uh, your tongue flaps up and down. The letter V, there's dialectical variations of that letter V. We really would wish um, that they could also learn that, what we call lingual dental, right? And so that double L is a dialectical variation. The Y is a dialectical variation. In English, there's 11 letters that represent more than one sound. All of our vowels have more than one sound, right? Our letter C has the soft, hard, and soft. G, hard and soft, right? Uh, but we also have uh, letters like the X, right? X can say what? X can say and X can say right? Like in xylophone, right? The 30 letters in Spanish represent 22 sounds and 13. Here we said it's so easy. Spanish so easy. 13 letters share an acceptable sound with at least one other letter. The 26 letters in English represent 44 for phonemes, and 14 letters share an acceptable sound with another one. So, for example, the C shares a sound with what? K, right? Uh, the letter G shares a sound with the letter J, J right? The letter Y shares with I, right? Fly. So now I want to teach you about the complete transfer, the partial transfer, the no transfer. So I want to capitalize upon what the kids know and about what they don't know. All right? So um, I had another like PowerPoint at the bottom. Can we just get out of this one? Oh. And I want to go in the beginning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so here we go. We're going to do the complete transfer, the partial transfer, the no transfer. I'm going to show you uh, how this can work. So if I have sounds that I already have in my native language, then I don't need to reteach those in English. I need to move on because we've got a lot of work to do in the English language. So let's just make a connection between what exists across the two languages, all right? So, for example, if I say something's a complete transfer. I'm going to insert something real quick. So I was passing um, a curriculum around so that you could see it. But the information that she gives is given to you right now is really important because it will help you in terms of the knowledge in terms of Spanish and English and similar sounds and sounds that are different. So I just want to point that out to make sure that you're kind of directing attention to her. So yes. Here we go. So for something to be a complete transfer, What I want to see is that we, uh, and the way we can make a connection across the languages for that complete transfer uh, would be that it has the same grapheme. So that grapheme is that written symbol, right? And it has the same morpheme, like a word, a word part. And it has the same phoneme, the sound, all right? 
my partial transfer would be, yes, both of those letters, those graphemes, they exist in the two languages. And both of those morphemes work, those word word parts. But what changes and what doesn't work is the phony. The phony, the sound is different. It's not the same. And a complete trans, I mean a no transfer means that it does, just nothing works. The graphing is not in the two languages, right? The morpheme is not in the two, nor is the phone. So let's look first at the letter A, right? So we have the letter A in English and Spanish, right? So we have that letter A in English and Spanish. Uh, in Spanish, we say A, ah, and our word in Spanish would be animales. In English, we would say A, and the word would be animals, and the sound would be A. Ah. So in Spanish, we say A, ah, in English, we say A. Ah. So that would go here under partial because we have that letter, we have that symbol, but the sound changed. Say the sound book. That's going to be the same, right? So the letter B is going to be the same in both, right? Say, let's look at camera. That's a camera. That's going to be the same. Say, ch. is that the same in English? Ch. Chimney, chimenea. De doctor de, d doctor d. That works. E elefante, e, e elephant, e, that's pretty close, short e, very close. F, fuego, f, right? F, fire, f, that works. He, ganso, g, goose. The H is partial, because in Spanish it's silent, all right? The I is partial, because in, 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 in Spanish, it's E, right? And in English, the letter I is E, right? The J is partial. In Spanish, we say, in English, for the letter J, we say J, it's a little bit further down. The K works, say, Kilo, and in English that's kilo, right? So that works. <coughs> the L works, lemon, limon. The double L does not transfer. The M works, mama. The N works, needle, mom, nest. Um, my long O can work, oceano, ocean, that's pretty close. My P works. Piano. My Q U is partial. Say quintet. In Spanish we say quinteto, group of five. My R is trilled in Spanish, but not in English. We don't have the double R, right? The S works, sol, sun. The T works, tomate, tomato. Now, this letter U. It's long U, that is partial, because we say U in Spanish, you say U. The V will work if they don't say the V for V. The W works, the X of saxophone, so under X when it says KS, that works. But when the X says Z, that's partial, because in Spanish we say Z, and in English you say Z. The Y works, and the Z, you say in Spanish, and you <laughs> all right? So right now, that's all we're going to do for there. Right now, I have 19 that are exactly the same, and 9 that are almost the same, and that gives me 28 reading concepts, 28 letter sounds that will work between these two languages. So I'm not going to go and teach them again, the B and the C and the D and the F, because they already know that. 
And so you, if you look at your Wells manual, you'll look under phonics, and you'll see there, for example, on page two and three under the phonics section, that I already have it all lined out for the students, what's the complete and what's the partial, and these are the complete. So this is really trying to make connections across um, the languages, right? So when you're designing instruction, we have to see what the kids know, and then we have to work on what they don't, or what's almost the same, and then, uh, And then what's totally different, like the S-H-T-H-N-G and some of those diphthongs. Okay. So we want to capitalize on the letters and sounds that are the same, and we want to move to those that are almost the same, and then all those that are brand new to these kids. So here's an example lesson. Students, listen as I say these words with the same sound, all right? So, and I want you to tell me what sound it is and how, how am I gonna adapt this uh, for my English learner? Okay, so say the word, say jam. Jam. Say jog. No. Say jet. Jet. Let me write the words for you to say. Jam. Jog, jet. Echo? Jet, <laughs> jog, jet. Very good, students. What do you see at the beginning of each word? The letter is J. 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 Say J. 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 And my sound is J. J. To help us remember the J sound, I want you to say Jaguar. Jaguar. In Spanish, you say Jaguar. So these are the same words, but in English, we say J. And in Spanish, you say, very good. So our key word is jaguar. Do you recognize that word in your Spanish language or in your home language? Do you recognize this uh, sound? You have this sound in your native language, right? What about the key word, jaguar? Do you have that word in your language? Turn to your partner and say a sentence. Use the word jaguar in a sentence. Very good. Very good. Say the name of the letter. Say the key word. Say the sound. Very good. Now we're going to write the letter. All right. So what I did different here is I had the key word. I had them use it. I asked them if they recognized the letter and sound in their language. Was there any connection to be made? All right. So if you look under the phonics section, I do something else that's extra in the phonics section for this letter J. Turn to page nine. You have to look at Maybe one again. Huh? There's only one. Oh, there's only one. Oh, sorry. I don't know what happened to mine. Okay. Oh, it was only one and it came around. Oh, sorry. Okay. So you can look at this. I just want to show you and point out to you what I do. And for those of you in the North, you don't have it. But not only would I work on J, right, in English, but if you're having trouble, what I do right there under the J is I teach them that they almost have the sound in their native language, and that's called an approximate, right? So watch this. Say, uh, put your hand on your vocal cords and say, ch, 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 ch. Do your vocal cords vibrate? No. no. Now say it with your voice box on. Ch, 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 ch. Turn off your voice, voice box. Turn it on. <laughs> Those are the same sounds. And you have ch in your language. You just need to turn on your voice to say this challenging sound for you, which is j. All right? Then I have them practice their writing, right? With the j. You do have that in your handouts, right? I think you do. Mm -hmm. 
And so what I would have them do there is they would have to uh, trace uh, the letter. So um, and we could skywrite it. The letter is J. So I would say uh, down, maybe hook and dot. What does it say for you for the J? What does it say at the top? Down. Oh, okay. Down, hook, and dot. Echo? J. The letter is? J. Say down, down. hook, Dot. Let's write it in the sky. J. Down, hook, dot. Ready, name? J. Down, hook, dot. Ready, name? J. Down, hook, dot. Very good. In section one of your papers, I want you to trace the letter three times. Ready, name? J. Say. Down, hook, dot. Ready, name? J. Down, hook, dot. Dot. Ready, Nate? J. J. Down, 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 down. Very good. Now I want you to trace it with your pencil three times. Ready, name? J. Down, down hook, dot. Ready, name? J. Down, hook, dot. Ready, name? J. Down, hook, dot. Section two, I want you to write it. Ready, name? J. Down, hook, dot. Section three, I want you to close your eyes and write it from memory. Ready, name? J. Down, hook, dot. Very good. Now I want you to write it in the sky without saying the let those strokes. J. Down, hook, Without the strokes. Now make your very best copy. The letter is? J. Down, hook, all right, and so what I've done is I've done all the strokes for all the letters in print and in person. All right.